they're not adjusting well to the Y9. Um, I, I just, it just doesn't look pretty. And it looked the exactness of a defense. It just looks so predictable when they blitz. It, it It's the same thing. It's just, well, it's very vanilla. It feels well, vanilla defensively. One time they blitzed on a third down and it did force uh, the end of the drive. Uh, that that yeah. was nice. And because like I've talked to you about the, these blitzes that keep getting picked up or whatever. It was yeah. a play action play from it's, Kyler. It was like yeah. one of the few times they came home. Here's where, where my critique on, and again, it's easy to critique these things. The other team gets paid too. But my criticism when it comes to coaching it's specifically in the red zone. And I've been calling for this for a long time. But, like, I look at it, and a lot of times, unless it's the two-minute drill, when they come to, like, f- wherever they are in the in, inside the 10, the first play is almost always a predictable run. And then the second play is a boot to a short-sided field, and it's a tough throw underneath where the end zone is, and you're asking your guy to hit a guy on the move and break a tackle and get into the end zone. I want to see them throw the ball into the end zone. I don't see them do that enough. I don't see bunch formations on one side, isolating guy on the other side. I don't see clear out plays for a quick little underneath. They did on the one Kittle touchdown, but I don't see enough of that. And I that's just my particular grip. I'm looking at all their different red zone situations, and there's too many scrambles, like like l- schemed rollouts where where. Purdy's going to a short side yeah. and throwing on the run and well, throwing you, below where the end zone is. Not, not to cut you off, but when you roll out in the red zone, I don't even like when you roll out, period. But you take away half the football That's field. That's what I'm saying. You're only working with half a football field, which doesn't make a lot of sense there. You are listening to 95 7 of the game, KGMG FM and AC1 San Francisco, not a C Sports Station, always live on the free Odyssey app. We're going to get back to the calls in just a second. Shasky, hold tight. We're going to play Shanahan's three minute conference call. Spinoni's like, hey, it's worth listening to. Okay. So let's listen to Kyle Shanahan, who just finished up a conference call for about three minutes, and then we'll get back to the calls. Everybody's going to get on here. It's a Monday. You know what that means. We're guest-free. Brought to you by the River Islands Guest Line. <laughs> you are the guest today, callers. But we'll get back to you in just a second. Here is Kyle Shanahan, who just wrapped up his conference call. And and how do you, as a head coach, kind of look back on what happened yesterday and um, just well, how's, how's your mindset when it comes to, to dealing with that loss and, and trying to put it behind you and figuring out ways to not allow that to happen again? Same way I do it always. I just don't get to go over with the whole team as long on a whole Monday. Um, so the, my process of that started all last night. Um, I do all that stuff you know, at home when I'm done, um, when I get home. And then um, I come in in the morning and clarify with all the coaches real early and um, put that to bed with them. And then get right to Seattle. Hey, hey Kyle, on the on the last pass that Brock attempted with blitzing, what was the coaching point on that one in terms of I guess where Mason, which guy he should have picked up, and, and did one of the interior linemen pick up the wrong guy? Uh, no, they had a blitz. We had two guys. When two guys blitz the back, um, that means you're hot, and we just got to get rid of the ball quicker. Kyle, this may fall under you don't have time, but Brock talked yesterday about talking to Jordan Mason about obviously the standard of excellence, but not putting it all on him for the loss. As a coach, do you have time to talk to him about that and how do you balance that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mentioned it after the game that, that that's not all on JP. We all had our part. I mean, we had four possessions in the second half and we had three turnovers and one turnover on down. So um, to make it come down to the last turnover is, you know, the easier way out, but that's not the case. All these plays affect the whole game and, um, you know, we didn't score in the second half, and the four times we got the ball, basically four turnovers when you turn it over on down. So um, his was just one part of that. Kyle, Kyle, I think it was last week everyone was saying how great um, Brock scrambling was and how effective it can be. Um, I guess, you know, now obviously after a loss, it's like, well, uh, what, uh, you know, what about his scrambling? I don't know. Is there a fine line sometimes of uh, trying to exhaust the play um, and, and making something happen, and then sometimes maybe just taking a check down or throwing it away. Yeah, always. I mean, that, that's why that's why you try to cover that too when those things happen, good or bad. I mean, last week I thought it really helped out, and he made a number of plays with it. But I think I also said last week there's a couple that it hurt us on, and I'd say the same thing happened yesterday. There's always some good and bad for both of those things. You hope the good out um, outweighs the bad, which which it has. Um, but there was a couple, um, you know, in particular that sack on the second and 14 um, that were tough to overcome. Coach, last night, George Kittle 
spoke about the fact that in with this team compared to years past, you guys just haven't been able to kind of figure out how to get these like gritty or gross wins, he called them. When you're watching in practice or when you're watching from the sideline in the games, what do you think is missing with this team to be able to kind of close out these games compared to other seasons? Um, I just think that's kind of a generic answer for someone trying to answer your guys' questions. You know, it comes down to specifics, um, so it's hard to give a generic answer. But, you know, in these two games that, you know, these two um, division games that we believe we should have won with the lead we had in the second half, uh, I thought this one was worse than the Rams one in terms of we got sloppier in terms of our turnovers and things like that, not scoring in the second half. Um, When you have a lead on people, um, you need to finish them. The way you finish people is you continue to score. And if you aren't doing that, you, you can't turn it over, and you got to stop people at the end. And, um, you know, we had a couple chances there at the end, especially on that fourth down. Thought Kyler made a hell of a play. Um, but those are the plays you got to stop to win these, especially when it's tight like that. That is Kyle Shanahan there. Kyle Shanahan in his conference call. By the way, Yeter Gross Matos, their free agent signing from Carolina, is going to be out four to eight weeks. He just had surgery, so he's out four to eight weeks. Either Eater Gross Matos out uh, four to four to eight weeks, I should say four to eight weeks. So, you know, big takeaway offensively: four possessions, interception, turnover on downs, fumble, interception. And he mentioned on the last play of the game where Brock Purdy threw the pick, cover zero blitz. They blitzed two guys, had two blitzers at the backer. Kyle Shanahan simply said, "You got to get rid of the ball quicker," which is my overall. My theme for Brock Purdy yesterday wasn't one of his. I thought it was one of his worst games in a regular season. I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback. I don't want people to misread what I, or mishear what I say here. But he's got to get rid of the ball quicker, and that was a theme yesterday against the Arizona Cardinals. Agreed. On that play, though, was it a five step drop? Like what? Like all the routes seemed I, pretty far well, down the line. Like, I, well, Kittle's five yards. Kittle's right I know, there. He was short, but he's but short right it's there. It's not like, I didn't think on that play, Brock held it that long. Like, okay. Yes. He's got to, I don't know. I, this is what you got to get out. A, I know. Got to get out. But sounds but, like the Super Bowl again. I don't gotta even get know out. if Kittle was turned around by the time he hit his third step, let alone the fifth. And I, I, I hear him. I hear him. But it's just, uh, well, the thing that, that like I find interesting Belichick's totally different than this. He's just, he's just, Belichick, when he lost, he would just, you know, we're on to the next and blah, blah, blah. But I know that Belichick's very reflective. We know that these losses would haunt him and he would learn from them. When Bill Walsh used to have his postgame pressers, and this was in his book, his memoirs, he felt like it was a confessional when they lost that he would admit yeah. all the things that he didn't do right. And he would go through it. And he would agonize, right. agonize. And he would literally become depressed for multiple days. And then by Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, he's ready to ramp himself up and get ready and try to turn optimistic to to beat the next team. Kyle's so different. And, and I'm not saying cool. it's right or wrong. It's just... It, it feels like he doesn't reflect, and it's like, hey, we just saw it, and then we move on. And I don't know how much he's, well, like, thinking about adjusting and moving on, but when he's well, talking about, you know, reviewing the game film with all the coaches, I kind of wanted to prod a little more on that. I know there's so many easy questions that could be asked in those things, but I'm just curious, like, w- when they do make these mistakes, philosophically, does he change some of his thought process, well, specifically in the red zone? Well, number one, you got a game on Thursday. So you have to move on very fast. Of course. You have to move on. And everybody's different. Everybody agonizes differently. Um, This guy's won a lot of games with the 49ers over the last five years. So however he agonizes, and every coach is different, how they handle losses. I don't think Kyle handles losses greatly. I don't, I don't I, think I, I, think, I don't think, like, I don't think he does. And I don't think he does. But everybody's differently. We don't know if Kyle gets depressed at night. We don't know if he's got to keep a hold of this locker room and move on to Seattle very, very quickly. He sounded frustrated. He said this loss is worse than the Rams one. Well, he looks this, this year. Rough. He doesn't look happy. He, well, he's, I don't he, blame he, him. I mean, he always kind of looks a little miserable personally. Yeah, but I thought That's he was a little me. more comfortable. I mean, they were winning a lot of big games. Well, I, I, I always think Kyle's kind of looks a little scruffy, a little... A little on annoyed edge. at times. He, he, that's just Kyle. Yeah, him and Belichick are Kyle. very, very uh, right. similar in that right. sense where they, I do believe right. they're more salty so, than I, sweet. I don't think he's happy with the loss, but also you can't put every it, – it, it's a different time. It's a different day and age. Well, Bill Walsh, Coach, by the way, George Kittle's wide open on the final play. Oh, my God, he's wide open. Um Wide open. He's going to get out of bounds. It's going to get about 10 to 12 yards. Yeah, they but is it a three midfield. or five-step drop? Yeah, they would have crossed three or five yards. I don't – it should – Sounds like it should have been a one-two drop. It was a five. Brock Purdy dropped back like he had all the time in the world. Okay. Should have been one-two well, throw. Again, so, I don't know what was being told. So you know? Shanahan said he should have got rid of the ball quicker. 
Should have got rid of the ball quicker, which means it should have been one, two, three, boom. Get the ball out. Zero blitz. Recognize a blitz. So that's, you know, it sounds like it's on Purdy. But again, maybe it sounds like Shanahan's throwing Purdy under the bus again. I, I, so, I so again, we got everybody pointing the fingers everywhere, saying things are weird. Well, we need adjustments. We need this. We need that. How about we all just take accountability and say, you know what? Arizona kicked our ass in the that's, second half. They ran the ball down our throats. They have a 6.5 yards to carry on the ground. We didn't score the second half. We have four possessions. We turned it over each possession. How about we just take accountability for once and move on to Seattle? Uh-oh. What happens, Spadone? Oh, bye-bye. Bye-bye.